Hey there, in this video I will cover lithium battery regulations and standards in the US. All right, begin by looking into UL standards, CPSC recommendations, CPSAA, the HMR, and finally lab testing. All right, so the first slide here um, is dedicated to UL standards and UL stands for Underwriter Laboratories. They have been around for more than a more than a century now. What they are mainly known for in in this era is is their standards that apply to electronics. Now, keep in mind that UL standards are, for the most part at least, voluntary in in the United States. But nonetheless, they have developed a range of standards that apply to different types of lithium batteries and, and different aspects of lithium batteries. The most well known is UL sixteen forty two standards for lithium batteries. And if I remember correctly, this is also the standard that is referenced in the Amazon Seller Central, meaning that if you sell lithium batteries or lithium battery power devices on Amazon, then they have made UL 1642 mandatory. So in short, retailers, marketplaces can determine that a voluntary standard is required is mandatory. And these are just a few examples. They may even be outdated, but you can find up to date standards on the UL website, and you can also find additional standards. Let's move on then. So second, we have CPSC recommendations and the CPSC uh, stands for the Consumer Product Safety Commission. What is interesting here is that they have not published mandatory standards or regulations that directly impact lithium batteries. Instead, they have, they, there's a page on the CPSC website dedicated to recommendations. That's actually the term they use for lithium batteries. And the recommendations you can see on the right, components and battery powered products are, should comply with applicable voluntary standards. That's a recommendation. I'm not listing the standards here, but I can tell you that UL 1642 is one of them. One of the standards that, that they are listing on the website. So what does that mean? It can be confusing. A standard is, is voluntary. They even, they even make it clear here that this concerns voluntary standards. Nonetheless, the CPSC is actively recommending that brands, that importers and manufacturers comply with these so-called voluntary standards. Well, I don't know why they have not adopted um, mandatory standards specific to lithium, lithium batteries or other electronic products for that matter. This I do not know. But what I do know is that in practice, if you're selling a lithium battery or a device that contains a lithium battery and something happens like the hoverboards in 2015, if, if, uh, if you rem remember that, you know, um, if, if that happens, meaning that batteries explode, for example, then it doesn't matter if there are no mandatory standards, this product can still be subject to a recall on the basis that it's unsafe. So what the CPSC states here that end of the day, it's in your interest as a brand, as an import, as a manufacturer, as an Amazon seller, as any company selling in the United States to ensure compliance with standards that cover lithium batteries. And ultimately it doesn't really matter if these are voluntary or not. It's quite irrelevant actually, because at the end of the day, you're facing the risk of a recall if something goes wrong. Okay. The second part, the second recommendation is new components and products that are not yet subject to voluntary standards should be designed considering the best practices from similar voluntary standards. And my understanding is that there are, uh, well, not just an understanding, I know that there are uh, standards that apply directly to lithium batteries in existence, as I just showed in a previous slide. That being said, maybe other aspects here uh, concerning the, the embedding and, and battery power devices containing lithium batteries might be something they're they referring to here, but I can't be more specific than that. Uh, 
the third recommendation is is very important and that concerns essentially design for compliance that that compliance on a component level is not always enough it's not always sufficient to to ensure compliance only for the lithium battery itself but that the safety and the safety aspects must be considered on a well what they call here design with a system approach so essentially that that safety is 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 implemented is embedded into the product design uh, from the very from the drawing board really and they do mention some aspects here um in, uh, intended loads and conditions uh, battery packs with proper battery management systems and charge control, short circuit protection, cell balancing. They also mentioned charges. That's also something that's very often overlooked. Uh, AC adapters and charges that go straight into the power socket must also be compliant in the EU. That's mandatory. And there are um, standards. Uh, so there are uh, at least one UL standard that applies directly to, to AC adapters as well. And finally, that end product systems are, are tested together for safe function um, and appropriate conditions. So ultimately that the entire system is tested and that, that you don't just pick a charger here, you put a battery in, inside and, and you assume that this will, um, the product is, 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 is fully functional and safe without testing the entire system. This is pretty basic. These this is these best practices are in no way unique to the United States, uh, but I just want to reiterate that even though this is these are published as recommendations in practice, it's in your interest that you, when you sell lithium batteries or lithium battery powered devices, these are safe and. This requires that you have an approach where you verify compliance uh, on a component level, on a system level, and finally also testing. And for more information, you can go to the cpsc.gov website slash regulations dash laws uh, dash dash standards dash voluntary dash standards slash topics slash batteries. That's a, that's a long URL. Anyway, you can see it down here. Let's move on. Now, let's look into CPSIA. So this stands for the Consumer Product Safety Initiative Act and is also administered by the CPSC. So CPSIA, it sets certification and testing and, and safety requirements for all children's products. And when it comes to lithium batteries, that's not always clear cut. But if we look at the very basics, so CPSIA compliance essentially requires compliance with the ASTM standards that apply. And the current, well, the primary toy safety standard in the United States is ASTM F963. And it does con contain provisions. It does contain requirements and yeah, maybe even schematics for battery operated toys. And what this is referring to is that battery compartments should be adequately safe even though I'm not sure if they made that mandatory yet, but nonetheless, products must be safe. And just because it, 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 it doesn't violate something that is explicitly written, it doesn't mean that it, 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 it will get a pass if something goes wrong. So once again, we come back to the topic of product compliance from a more high level perspective, where it's not only about looking at, okay, what are the standards saying, and, but, but taking a more holistic approach where you look at the overall safety of the, of the product for, for the consumer. Now, the CPSC, they, 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 published, um, uh, they published a document, I, I don't know when they did that, a um, couple of years ago maybe, concerning the direction that they were at that time at least planning to take when it comes to the risk of um, battery cell ingestions, basically children um, swallowing, swallowing uh, lithium batteries and, and possibly also other types of uh, button or coin cell batteries, which 
absolutely horrific, horrible, horrible consequences. But why does this relate then to lithium batteries? It's really, really two parts here. And, and one is that we're looking, well, they are looking at requiring, well, setting standards, mandatory standards likely, that improve the battery compartment design and essentially require a screw or two independent independent simultaneous motions to access the battery. I mentioned that in a previous slide on the CPSAA, but my understanding is that they are not just looking at children's products here. They are looking beyond children's products as children can, of course, also get access to uh, batteries that are not toys or other children's products in, in a domestic setting, right? And another, another aspect of this is also to improve the packaging of lithium batteries. They also mentioned labeling and and uh, battery design. So in in twenty twenty one, there was a Senate bill uh, passed in the U.S. Um, that intends to protect children and other consumers, well, essentially against uh, accidental uh, ingest ingestion of battery cell or coin batteries by requiring the CPSC to create product sa a product safety standard or product safety standards that require child resistant closures on consumer products that use such batteries and for other purposes. So what we're likely looking at is, is um, standards that will then make it mandatory to make the packaging uh, that contain uh, lithium batteries, button cell batteries, um, child resistant, and the aspect that is more complex, which is that design is also impacted when it comes to, to, to battery compartments, because that's, that's of course also a risk. And, and, and that second part is likely what will impact um, many, many companies um, as, as, well, unless you're selling batteries, then, then uh, the packaging would be of, of less importance. But yeah, it, it could require that you have to re-engineer the product to some extent. Okay, let's look into HMR. So, so the hazardous uh, materials regulation or HMR concerns transportation of lithium batteries. Lithium batteries are often seen as high risk items, high risk materials. And what it really comes down to is labeling requirements on the packaging. That must be classed and described, packed and marked, that they can know that this box, this, this, this shipment, this cargo contains lithium batteries. There are restrictions when it comes to the quantity as you can see in point three. And it also requires, it, it references in this case, another standard, which is that of UN 38.3. We have a separate video on the topic of UN 38.3. But essentially, there are minimum safety requirements that must be met before. You can not only import, but even transport, transport batteries or battery powered devices these days. And you can find more details uh, in an eCFR website, specifically 49 CFR part 171 to 180. Right. So before we end this video, I also want to clarify that generally speaking, you do need, well, you often need uh, lab testing to verify compliance with the safety standards. Various companies that do provide third party testing when it comes to batteries. Another option is that you only or well, exclusively procure batteries from suppliers that have test reports. This is, this means that you need to set up a supply chain where you target specific companies, usually high-end companies, could be Maxwell, TDK, Samsung. These companies, they, they sometimes have test reports, UL test reports and so on, uh, publicly available on their website, but you need to handpick these suppliers. It can't be um, 
a secondary consideration that you let your, say, your, your manufacturer in Shenzhen uh, pick a battery supplier and assume that they will by default have test reports. That's very often not the case. So if you want to go, uh, if, if you want to follow this approach where you are relying on supplier test reports, you yourself need to contact the battery supplies directly or at the very least their authorized uh, wholesalers who will in then in turn uh, supply the batteries directly to your supplier. Even if you instruct a supplier, uh, say here in Asia, to procure a certain brand, I wouldn't trust them. Um, I wouldn't trust that they have my best interests in mind by default. Maybe they do, but primarily I, I wouldn't trust their ability to really sift through um, the long list of, say, battery wholesalers in, in, in Shenzhen. I, I recommend a much more hands-on approach where you yourself pick the, the suppliers and yeah, that way you have a, you can be confident that your supply chain is, is not contaminated with fake batteries. And let me tell you this, fake batteries is, 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 is a big problem. So you really need to be cautious when it comes to this stuff. Finally, though, you can't entirely rely on, 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 um, um component test reports though, when it comes to lithium batteries, as I mentioned with the CPSC recommendations, recommendation number three is that testing should be applied to the complete system. So that while you could cover part of, well, you, you could definitely save money uh, as you could potentially at least um, skip battery testing, but that doesn't mean you get away from lab testing entirely as um, system testing, meaning that you need to test the entire product with the battery inside connected to an AC adapter, for example. Um, before you can determine the product to be to be compliant and safe. But anyway, it could definitely speed things up. All right, that's everything for this uh, in this video. If you have questions, you can write a comment on YouTube or you can go to our website, compliancegate.com.